السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله عي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة على الفلاح عي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أخرج الإمام مسلم في صحيحه وأبو داود والنسائي وأحمد من حديث 
أم هشام بنت حارث بن النعمان رضي الله تعالى عنه عنها قالت حفظت قاف والقرآن المجيد من في رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو على المنبر يوم الجمعة This companion by the name of Umm Hisham radiallahu anha she said that I memorized Surah Qaf wal Quran al Majid from the mouth of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he would recite it on the member on the day of Jum'ah. And there are other narrations from other companions mentioning that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would frequently read Surah Qaf on Friday on the member. Similarly, we have other narrations in which the companions mentioned the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reciting Surah Tuqaf on Friday as well as on the Eid. And we understand from this action of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he would often repeat something it indicates some importance and significance that we need to give special attention and pay attention to. Particularly when we see the Prophet ﷺ in his action, he would repeat this surah during times when there would be large gatherings like the Friday and the Eid. It is a surah from the surahs in the Quran that has within it summarized some very critical important information with regard with regards to the foundations of what a muslim is supposed to believe in in this surah we see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving emphasis to some foundational pillars of our creed and our aqidah and our iman from the belief in the messengers to the belief in the resurrection the reality of the human being in this dunya and that this dunya is temporary and that the human being is going to eventually die and leave this world and what will the condition of the human being be in the afterlife based on their deeds and their actions in this dunya all of these critically important foundations of our Iman summarized in this surah. And we don't have enough time to go into detail with regards to all of the important lessons from Surah Tuqaf. But I intend and I ask Allah wa Ta'ala to grant us tawfiq and to allow us to benefit to inshallah Ta'ala go through it in parts. Because it is very important that we pay attention to this surah just like we are supposed to pay attention to the rest of the Quran. And that leads us to the first thing that we see being emphasized in this surah is the glorious nature of the revelation, the book of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the surah by saying Qaf. And this is from the letters in the Quran that are known as the letters that are cut up. Like Alif Lam Mim and Hameen in which the most correct opinion is that only Allah wa ta'ala knows the true meaning of why he mentioned it in that particular position wa ta'ala and this was also a challenge to those kuffar of Quraysh who claimed to be the experts when it comes to the Arabic language and the eloquence in the Arabic language. And we see in the Quran several times Allah challenges them. Just try to produce one chapter or one surah similar to the Quran. Of course, they were obviously unable to fulfill that challenge. Another part of the Quran, Allah says, just produce 
10 ayahs. If you cannot do a surah, produce 10 ayahs similar to this Quran. A challenge that they could not fulfill. Allah even mentions in a part of the, in the Quran, just bring one ayah similar to it. Even those letters produce something similar to it, but they will never be able to because of the miraculous nature of the book of Allah. And the Quran goes into extensive detail explaining to us from the wisdoms and from the objectives of the Quran being revealed is for us to understand the revelation and the speech of Allah and to follow it and to make it our code in life and our system and methodology to follow. This Quran, as Allah says, He makes an oath by the Quran in the beginning of this surah. Allah says, وَالْقُرْآنِ الْمَجِيدِ And by the Quran that is Al-Majid, this Quran that has culminated all forms of perfection, it's perfect in its eloquence, it's perfect in its messaging, it's perfect in everything that consists in that book in terms of what is to be followed. And it deserves to be followed and lived by. And it is a speech of Allah wa Taala, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And this Quran is enough and sufficient for you and I as a reminder. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends off the same surah by saying, فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيد. Let this Quran be a remembrance for those who fear and who have fear in Allah. And a lot can be mentioned about the importance of the book and the glorious nature of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an oath by the Quran. And for those of you who don't know, when you see throughout the book of Allah that Allah wa ta'ala makes an oath, it is an indication that there is an important message that is coming after that you and I need to pay attention to. And here in this surah, the answer and the response to the oath is embedded within the meaning of the entire surah and the meanings of what is mentioned in the entire surah. At the very beginning of this surah, my brothers and sisters, and it's important that we pay attention to this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses two matters that the kuffar of Quraysh rejected and found strange. And those two matters are from the core foundations of what we are supposed to believe in as Muslims. Number one is rejecting the fact that Allah has chose from amongst the human beings a messenger. They rejected it. Allah says they are amazed that we have chose from amongst them and we have brought to them from amongst them a messenger, a warner from amongst them. They found this matter to be something that is strange. Why are you a messenger? How come Allah didn't choose somebody else? How come Allah did not send down angels? What they fail to realize, number one, is that Allah chooses whom He pleases to be His messenger. Allah chooses from the angels and from the human beings whomever He pleases to be His representative and His messenger. And if Allah were to choose for the human beings an angel to be a messenger, then the human beings would have found an excuse to reject the messenger by saying, well, we're humans and that is an angel. They're perfect. How can we even match up and compare? But Allah chose from amongst the human beings, the best of the human beings, to be an example for us to follow and to obey and to understand how is it that we're supposed to worship Allah wa ta'ala. And the final messenger is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we have been commanded to follow. Al-Imanu bil Rusul to believe in all of the messengers and to follow and obey Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is from the object is from the prime foundations of our iman that's number 1 the second thing that they rejected and they found strange is the concept of resurrection 
that we are going to die and then our bodies are going to wither away and be destroyed and then somehow we're going to be brought back out of the grave? This is strange. أَإِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا ذَلِكَ رَجْعٌ بَعِيدًا they said, when we, are we, gonna, when we die, and then our bodies decompose and wither away, and we, we, we are blown into oblivion in terms of there's nothing left from our physical body, are we going to be brought back again? That is impossible, they would say. That is very far-fetched. And Allah Taala wa ta would respond in the subsequent ayahs by first of all making it clear that it is not difficult in the sight of Allah Taala wa ta and He also brings intellectual proofs to make you the human being whom Allah has given a brain to think to ponder and reflect it's not difficult for Allah wa ta to bring you back first and foremost Allah wa ta's knowledge encompasses everything Allah says Allah knows when your body is put in the ground and your body begins to slowly wither away and decompose, Allah wa ta'ala knows exactly where every part of you is in the earth. It is not difficult for Allah to bring you back. It's not something that is very difficult to understand. Everything is recorded. But the issue is, those who rejected, they didn't want to accept the truth when it came to them. They rejected because they didn't want the truth and they were in deep confusion. So Allah wa ta'ala makes it clear for us. Think human being. Are you claiming that it is difficult for Allah to bring you back after you have died? This is easy in the sight of Allah. Let me just make you think and reflect and show you how Allah wa ta'ala has created creations that are greater and bigger than you and more complex than you. And Allah created them from nothing. Allah says, do you not look, just look at the sky. Look at the sky with your eyes. But not only look with your eyes, but also observe and ponder with your heart. Look at it. Look how Allah created it. Look how Allah built it. Allah created this roof over you, this sky. How it is. It is up there without any pillars holding it up. Allah says He beautified it. Beautified it with stars. Beautified it with the colors when you see the sun rising and the sun setting. How beautiful the sky looks. You can take any camera that you want to try to take photos, but it will never be as good as what you can see with your own eyes, how beautiful the sky is. Have you ever been to the outskirts of the city at night when there's a full moon? How beautiful that looks. When there is no full moon, but the sky is full of stars, how beautiful that looks. Do you know that in some portions of the North Pole, at certain times of the year, there are colors in the sky that you cannot possibly bring and make on your own. Beautiful, amazing. Allah beautified the sky. There is no cracks in the sky. There is no breakage in the sky. There is no glitches in the sky. If you even try to look and attempt and maybe find, maybe there is some type of imperfection, you will only be the one that will exhaust yourself. You will be the only one that will tire yourself out. Allah tells you, فَرْجِعِ الْبَصَرِ هَلْ تَرَى مِنْ فُطُورِ Look, look back at the sky that Allah has beautified and has created. Do you see any breaks? Do you see any cracks? Look at it over and over. Try to find any type of glitch in the sky. And it has been perfect for thousands of years from the beginning of the time it was created. You're only going to be the one that's going to fail and find about perfection in the creation of Allah. Allah created that from nothing. Allah has spread the earth for you. Allah has made the earth for you to utilize. You walk on the earth. 
You build your roads. You build your skyscrapers. You travel on the earth. You grow your crops. You live and you benefit from the earth. The earth never punks you off. It never rejects you. It never refuses you. You use it in a way that is pleasing to you. Allah put that there for you. And the earth is not just one that moves on its own, but Allah made it firm for you. Allah placed in it mountains to keep the earth firm from quaking and from shaking. Out of the earth, Allah gives you vegetation. Allah gives you crops. Allah gives you all types of benefits that are of benefit to you. Things that are beautiful to look at. Things that are amazing to benefit from. All of those things, they are a reminder for you. They are a point of reflection for you to reflect upon. But the only ones who can actually see and ponder and reflect and realize that this is an important sign and an important creation from the creations of Allah is the one who has Iman in his heart. The one who's not heedless. The one who's not completely plugged out. This is a reminder for you. And it's an indication. That if Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is able to do all of this in terms of his creation from scratch, do you think it's difficult for Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to bring you back after he has already created you? Allah continues, When Azalna min as-sama'i ma'an, Allah brings down water for you from the sky. This water is mubarak, it's blessed. It has barakah. The one who brought down the water is mubarak, tabarakah wa ta'ala. And the effects of that rain when it comes down on the earth, it brings blessing in terms of what grows out of the earth. That's what we have to understand and believe. The Messenger of Allah when it would rain, he would go up sallallahu And he would use the water of the rain to wipe himself sallallahu This just came down from Allah. But what is our understanding when it comes to rain? What, are, what, are, what has been ingrained in our psyche when it comes to rain? Rain, rain, go away. Come again some other day. Our children memorize those types of songs. We see the rain and all of a sudden we complain. It's gloomy, it's rainy. Oh man, it is Mubarak. We got to teach our kids that no, this is raining that is pouring. It's blessings that is pouring from Allah. Tabarak wa ta'ala for you as a provision. What is the purpose of this rain coming down? From the purposes and the outcomes is out of the earth, Allah gives you gardens. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala gives you vegetation and crops that come out of the earth for you to eat, for you to store, for you to utilize for yourselves, for you to utilize for your animals. Out of the earth, tall trees bearing fruit that is beautiful in its sight and is delicious in its taste. All of that is for you, Allah says. Rizqan lil ibad. It is a provision for the slaves of Allah. And another objective of the rain coming down, Allah says, Wa ahyayna bihi baldatan mayta. With that water that is coming down, falling upon the ground that has no life that is dead, out of the earth comes out life, out of the earth comes out crops, out of the earth comes out trees. The earth was dead and out of it came out life. And Allah says, Kadalika nushur. Just the way the life comes out of the earth, you will also come out of the earth back to life. And in fact, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, when he talks about the resurrection, he says that the people will come out of the earth when they're resurrected like plants coming out of the earth. How hard is it for you to contemplate and understand that? Why is it so difficult for you to accept it? So here in these ayat, Allah is giving us tar targheed. Allah is encouraging us, reflect and ponder. And, and use the intellect that Allah has given you to see that all of these are signs of the greatness of Allah. It is signs that Allah alone is the one who is the creator, tabaraka wa ta'ala. And most importantly, it is a sign and a reminder that Allah alone deserves to be worshipped. And that no partner should be ascribed in ibadah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, in the balance we see in the Qur'an, we have tarheeb and encouragement, but we also have tarheeb. Allah is warning you. 
Those people who came before you, O Quraysh, who are taking the same path that you're taking now and rejecting, what happened to them? Allah says, كَذَّبَتْ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمَ نُوحٍ وَعَادٍ وَأَصْحَابُ الرَّسِّ وَالثَّمُودِ All those nations that came before, the ones who rejected, وَعَادٌ وَفِرْعَوْنُ وَإِخْوَانُ لُوطِ وَأَصْحَابُ الْعِيْكَةِ وَقَوْمُ تُبَّعْ كُلٌّ كَذَّبَ الرُّسُلِ فَحَقَّ وَعِيدٌ Allah says those nations, and here Allah does not talk about the details of their stories. If you go to the Quran and other portions of the Quran, Allah speaks about the more detailed explanation of those nations. The stories that we need to understand from what they did that was wrong, so that we don't fall into the same mistake. Allah says all of those nations, what do they have in common? They rejected the messengers. I want you to pay attention to this point before I sit down. Allah says, Kullun kathaba rusul. They all rejected the messengers. Each ummah, Allah sent them a messenger. Why is Allah saying messengers? It's because as if we are being told that rejecting one messenger is rejecting all the messengers. Kathabat qawma Nuhin. Al Mursaleen, Allah says, the people of Nuh rejected the messengers. Didn't Allah only send Nuh to them? Why is Allah saying the messengers? Because by them rejecting Nuh, they're also rejecting the other prophets and messengers because they were all sent with the same system of belief to worship Allah alone. So we believe in all of the messengers and the prophets, those that have been told to us by name in the Quran, whether it's Ibrahim or Musa or Isa, Jesus Christ, or Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we believe in all of them. La nufarriqu bayna ahadim in ramin al-rusul. We do not make any distinction. We believe that they are all messengers of Allah sent with the same mission to tell the people to worship Allah alone. We ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to be from those who submit to following the path of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to follow the book of Allah and for the book to be our guide and to make us from those who do not reject the truth when it comes to us. Let's ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and yaja'alana mimman yasami'una al-qula fa yitabi'una ahsana innahu waliyu thalika wal qadiru alayhi. الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على أمور الدنيا والدين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. The last point إن شاء الله تعالى to mention before we go to the صلاة. الله تبارك وتعالى then says أفعينا بالخلق الأول بل هم في لبس من خلق جديد. الله تبارك وتعالى in again reiterating and using intellectual proofs. To make the people think, Allah says, Do you think it is difficult for Allah, the one who brought you into existence from nothing, to bring you back again into existence? Think about it. You did not exist. Allah Taala created you. He brought you out of a drop of sperm. That's what you were initially. And then you came to the stage that you are now, and now you think it's difficult for Allah Taala to bring you back after you have already become a complete human being. أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الْإِنْسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهُ قَالَ مَنْ يُحْيِي الْعِظَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِيمٌ قُلْ يُحْيِيهَا الَّذِي أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٍ وهو بكل خلق عليم. الله تبارك وتعالى is saying here regarding the human being, the ignorant, foolish human being that came from that beginning, and then when he becomes complete and is grown, he thinks he's smart and he begins becoming argumentative and he 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 becomes combative and he he opposes Allah. والعياذ بالله. And from the argument, he starts bringing up there is no such thing as resurrection. Who's going to bring me back when I die and wither away? Allah says, Allah is the one who's going to bring you back. The one who created you from nothing at the beginning. What part of that can you not understand, man? Say that it is Allah, the one who created you at the beginning, that will bring you back. 
It is easier to bring something that already exists and, and, and put it back together than to create it from scratch out of nothing. And for Allah wa Taala, this is something that is easy and yaseer. The point here, my brothers, is these two important foundations from the pillars of Iman to believe in the messengers and to believe that there is a resurrection. And when you believe in that, brothers and sisters, it is from the things that will remind you to always stay in check. Because when you know that you're going to leave this world and that you have to stand up in front of Allah and that you're going to be held accountable for everything that you do, then that's a reminder for you to make it a point to do that which is khayr while you're still alive in obedience and to stay away from that which is prohibitions. And in the next portion of the surah, Allah wa Taala speaks about this specifically. What is the reality of the human being in this dunya? And what's going to be his condition when he dies and in the afterlife, which will inshallah ta'ala leave for a future khutbah inshallah ta'ala. We ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to forgive us and to pardon us. We ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to make us from those who listen and benefit from what we hear. Sallu wa sallim ala khatim al anbiya wa al mursaleen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barak ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Murda Allahumma ala sahabati wa tabi'in. Wa tabi'ihim wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsani ila yawm al-deen. Allahumma izza al-islam wa al-muslimin. Wa idhilla shirka wa al-mushri وانصر عبادك الموحدين وجعلنا من أنصار الدين اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استو <تصفيق> Brothers, please try to move as much as you can towards the right of the masjid. There's a lot of space on, those, on, the, on this side of the masjid. So, inshallah ta'ala, the brothers at the door, inshallah, just come in. There's plenty of room, inshallah ta'ala. Brothers, try to squeeze, inshallah ta'ala, move forward as much as you can and make room for your brothers, inshallah ta'ala. Sisters, make sure that the lines are straight. Also, make sure to make room for your sisters, inshallah. So, Allahu Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أَفَلَا يَنظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُصَيْطِرْ إِلَّا مَنْ تَوَلَّى وَكَفَرْ فَيُعَذِّبُهُ اللَّهُ الْعَذَابَ الْأَكْبَرْ إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله 
الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم <تصفيق> صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدع اليتيم ولا يحض على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراءون ويمنعون الماعون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر Oh. 